Now, our last nugget that we're going to talk about here is going to be a very common operation when we start working with Junos devices. We always want to put the latest and greatest software on these devices because really, that's what makes Juniper devices Juniper devices. The Junos software is incredibly robust and they do roll out patches and feature upgrades all the time and lots of times we want to capture these. So when we get a new shipment of devices coming in, we want to make sure they're all running on the exact same operating system and we may want them to be on one of the latest versions of the operating system. I remember when I was actually deploying stacks of virtual chassis, I would get the box on my desk and one at a time, the very first thing I had to do was actually perform an OS upgrade. So in this nugget, what we're going to talk about is how to perform an OS upgrade on a Junos device. This is going to be a lot of fun and this is going to be very valuable information for for you when you receive your first shipment of Junos devices. So let's get going talking about how to upgrade the Junos operating system. So now what I want to do is I want to check to see if I could actually upgrade this EX series switch. How do I go about doing that and how do I see if I can upgrade it? Then once I know that I can upgrade it, how do I actually upgrade it? That's what we're going to cover in this nugget. So check this out. From my CLI of my EX series switch, I'm going to give it the show version command. And right here, the Junos OS software suite and the boot, they're all kind of the same thing. 12.3, that's the major and minor, R4.6. So we know this is a bug fix release and 4.6 is the actual build number itself. Let's see if I can go to the EX2200 series software items in the Juniper website and see if there is a newer version than 12.3. I'll bring up the Juniper website of support.juniper.net slash support slash downloads. Right here in type a product name, I'll search for EX2200. Now this is an end of life product. That's okay, we can still work with this. I'll click here and under the versions here, well, I see a bunch of different versions, 15.1, which was actually deprecated, believe it or not, 14.1 X53 and then 12.3. If I look at 12.3, I see here that the latest version was released the 25th of January, 2016, and that's 12.3 R12. So what was I working with? 12.3 R4. So I know based on build numbers that there is a newer release that I can work with. So if I wanna upgrade my device to 12.3 R12, right here, I'm gonna click this TGZ file. That is the actual file that's going to be used to perform the upgrade. Now it does give me this warning that says if you're on version 10.4 or earlier, you need to add some additional software. If not, you're okay to proceed. So I'm gonna click continue to download. I'm gonna get logged in and it validates that my account does have all of the privileges that are necessary to actually access this operating system download. Now this is pretty interesting because right here, I can download the actual TGZ file directly to my local system. That way I may be able to put this on a USB drive or a local FTP or SCP server. And that way all of my Juniper devices can access this file locally. But notice right here, this usage instructions for Junos products, this is another way that you could actually go about upgrading this operating system. Right here, we can use, I know it's kind of, let me try and see if I can zoom in on this because that's a really small font. There we go. Right here, we have the file copy command. And then we specify the source, which is this HTTPS CDN endpoint. Right here, it goes all the way onto the next line. And then we tell it what location do we want to copy it to. In this case, it's putting it in the var temp folder and then the actual image name which is what we're going to put in here. So here is the actual URL that we are going to be copying right there. I'm gonna click copy. So it copies it and it tells me the URL has been copied to the clipboard. From my EX series device, I wanna first validate that I can actually reach the internet. Let's ping 8.8.8.8. And yes, I can actually reach the internet. The next thing I have to do is I have to actually set up DNS configurations because we are gonna be accessing this over a named URL. So let's do set system name server 8.8.8.8. We'll commit and quit. And now let's validate that we can ping google.com. Okay, there we go. We had to make sure that we specified the IPv4 family because it was attempting to use IPv6 communications instead. So there we go. Now I said ping inet google.com and I have successful round trip traffic. So now at this point, I can use the file copy command and I can paste in that long URL all the way down there and I'll make sure I wrap the whole thing in quotes so that it knows that that is the source. I'm now going to specify, we're gonna put this in the var temp folder and I have to specify the file name that it's actually going to be downloading. That file name is right here, this j install up to the domestic signed.tgz. Let me copy this 
and paste it right here. I'll press enter. Oh, and it tells me SSL support is disabled. Whoops. Well, silly me, I probably should have seen this one coming. This EX series device is so old that it doesn't even support TLS. It was trying to operate and grab this file directly off of the website using SSL version 3. And these old, these new websites don't even support, support version 3. In fact, Juniper devices stopped supporting SSL and exclusively only want to use TLS starting with version 17 and later. So here we are all the way back on version 12.3. That's how old this device is. So what we would really need to do at this point is we would need to get it on a flash drive and then copy it onto the operating system itself into that var temp folder. But this does highlight that the easy way that you could actually get a file from a remote location is the file copy command. And then you can use FTP, SCP, or HTTPS to actually download that file into your var temp folder. So once we've gotten our file loaded into the var temp folder, we want to run the command request system again because we are requesting an operating system change followed by software because we're changing the actual software that we're using here and we're adding a new operating system or a new feature into it. At this point, you specify where is the file that you want to actually use. So in my case, it would look something like this. It's a long file name, but that file name should remain the exact same. That's what Juniper devices really like. In fact, Juniper, before it even goes to install this, it's going to validate that it does have a signature signed on the software that is known or validated for Juniper devices. That way we don't accidentally install a bogus piece of software or package onto our device. So our command is request system software add, then we specify the exact location of our software, and this is important. You want to tack on reboot on the end of it, because this will install the operating system, but it does have to reboot in order to actually bring the new operating system to life. So by adding the reboot command on the end of it, it will go through the process of not only installing the operating system, but also doing the mandatory reboot that would be required after performing the installation. So this has been how to actually upgrade the Junos operating system. The big thing to remember is request system, software add, then the location. It is highly recommended that you put that file in the var temp folder because that way our storage subsystem can actually perform the cleanup operation on our files when we're done. So I hope this has been informative for you and I'd like to thank you for viewing.